Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Karen here, and it is my job to break down the best language therapy strategies so that you can go to work confident that you're setting your students up for success and building successful skills that will benefit them as adults. What I'm going to do today is reboot an older blog post that walked you through how to write syntax goals for speech therapy. Today, I'm walking through part two. Now, in part one, I walked you through picking what I call a base goal, which is a super general goal that really helps you get focused on the core observable behavior in your IEP goals. Now, you start with that base goal, and then you customize it to make it as specific as you need to be tailored to your students' areas where they need additional work. So we're going to walk through how to make that base goal that we talked about in part one more specific. So let's back up for a second, though, and talk about why we might need to address goals like this. So let me ask you a question. How many times have you gotten that dreaded language processing referral that sounds a little something like this? So a teacher comes up to you and says, my student sounds funny. I can't understand what they're saying half the time. They're clueless. They can't understand what's going on in my, my class. They can't understand what they're reading. And you say, so can you be more specific? What exactly is hard for them? And the teacher says, I'm not sure. They just don't sound right when they're explaining things. Something isn't clicking when they're reading. Can you just come in and check it out? And this can be a little bit frustrating, but it's really a fair enough statement on the teacher's part because after all, that's why you're here to, to guide through these types of issues. So what happens a lot of times is that we go in, we observe or screen the student, and we pray that we'll be able to give some helpful advice. Yet we come back from the screening or observation just as confused as the teacher. The kid does sound funny. Something really isn't right and things really aren't just sticking and we aren't really sure why they're not understanding. We're not really sure if it's attention. Can they not see? Do they need to get their eyes checked? Do they have a language issue? And if so, what type of language issue do they have? So if you do find that it is a language processing issue, it could be a number of things, but the one thing that you should always consider when you get this type of referral is syntax. And while I can't guarantee that that's always the number one culprit, I can say that it is one severely overlooked area. And it's not that we don't know that syntax is a problem, it's that there's so many different sentence types that we're not really sure where to start. And we don't always know how to write good goals for syntax. And the IEP goal banks out there aren't always helpful in being specific enough. But thankfully, Richard Zapoli wrote an article, An Intervention in School and Clinic, where he pinpointed four sentence types that are difficult for students with language disorders, which really gives us a, a roadmap for dealing with syntax issues and writing goals that are specific. So in this post, I'll be deconstructing the first one. So in the first post of this series, I gave you a general goal for syntax. In this post, you'll walk away with a couple more syntax objectives that are just a little bit more specific. So first, let's review that first base goal that I gave you in the last post, which was student will write and say sentences. So ultimately, when you're targeting syntax, the goal is that we want our students to say and write sentences correctly with correct sentence structure. But what if another person is reading this goal and maybe you want it to be a little bit more specific? And maybe you want to know when you're targeting that goal, what sentence types are difficult for your students. So that's why we're going to dive into the first one. And that is sentences with passive voice. So what is it and why is it hard for our students? So a sentence that has a passive voice has a, a sentence construction with the agent or the doer of an action and the recipient of that action reversed in the sentence. So I'm going to say that again. 
A sentence has passive voice when the agent or doer of an action and the recipient of that action are reversed. So usually the easiest way to explain this is to actually look at another less complex sentence type, a sentence with active voice. So when we use active voice, the doer of the action or that agent comes before the receiver. This is a little bit easier to process because the word order is logical and in a sequence that we'd expect. So here are some examples of sentences with active voice. The boy threw the ball. The students completed the assignment. So let's talk about that first sentence, the boy threw the ball. We hear the agent first, which is the boy. Then we hear what the boy did, threw. And then we hear what he did it to, the ball. Let's look at the second sentence. The students completed the assignment. So first we hear the agent, the students. Then we hear what the students did, completed. And then, they hear, then we hear what they completed, the assignment. So students with language processing issues are heavily reliant on that word order. This type of sentence allows them to process one thing at a time and doesn't require them to retain and transpose a significant amount of information in their heads. This word order is critical to processing that sentence if you have a language processing issue. But if the sentence does not have that same order, using word order to process can be a problem because let's look at passive voice. So instead of saying the boy threw the ball, we'd say the ball was thrown by the boy. Instead of saying the students completed the assignment, we'd say the assignment was completed by the students. So in these two sentences, we hear the receiver of the action first, the ball or the assignment, even though we may be expecting the doer, like the boy or the students, to come first. In order to process the sentences effectively, we need to hold the receiver in our short-term memory long enough to hear the agent. And we also need to take note of words like was and by the, those function words, which are necessary in order to make passive voice make sense. So because our students who have language issues are overly reliant on word order, we're often finding that they're hanging on a thread trying to remember all this information. So what we essentially want to do is make sure that we target passive voice directly. So what I'm going to do now is give you a simple goal to target this. So all we would need to do is take that base goal and just make it a little bit more specific. So instead of saying, student will say or write sentences, or student will say or write sentences with correct syntax, we could simply write a goal that says, student will say or write sentences that have passive voice with 80% accuracy. So all we really added there was the specific sentence type. And then of course, you always wanna make sure that you are adding that level of accuracy. So if you check out the entire blog post below this video, you'll see some other examples of some goals that you can write for passive voice, as well as some strategies that you can use. Additionally, below this video, I'll also walk you through a resource that is available to members of the Language Therapy Advanced Premium members community that walks you through some evidence-based strategies for targeting passive voice. So I'll give you a free tour so you can see what that resource looks like and how you might go about actually targeting this with your student. So thank you so much for watching and be sure to check out those links below this video. So the full blog post and also that free tour of the ultimate guide to syntax passive voice, which will walk you through some strategies for targeting this difficult sentence type. So I hope you've enjoyed this information and thank you so much for listening.